There we go. I think I'm good now. Hey, hey, everybody. Good evening, good evening, good evening. Uh, this is Seth Nix, and I want to thank you guys for coming to Worship Conversations. Um, let me first thank everybody for watching the replay. I'm just trying to get myself adjusted here to make sure uh, my iPad doesn't fall. <laughs> Don't want that to happen. And so I'm glad everybody having a chance to join. Um, I see people are coming in. Minister Justin, listen, I, if you guys don't mind, just start sharing with your followers. Start sharing with your followers. If you guys can invite uh, your followers. If you have an Apple device, swipe to the right and hit share broadcast and invite your followers. If you have an Android device, swipe up and, um, <clears throat> excuse me, um, and hit share broadcast and invite your followers. So I, that would be greatly, greatly appreciate. Gloria, thank you for joining. Hey, Justin, Justin, I hope everything's good in college, man. Hope you're enjoying it. Hope you're doing well. Thank you for inviting your followers. Who else do we have here? Who else do we have on the line so far today? Kiva. Hey, Kiva. Thank you for inviting your followers. Hey, Rod, thank you for joining, bro. Hey, Pastor McNulty. Uh, <clears throat> what up, DeMarco? Lady Triana, thank you for joining. Beauty and the Bling, my sister Joy, thank you for joining. Matt. Thank you for joining. Is that my man, Matt Foley? Is that Foley? Or is that a different Matt? Oh, that's a different Matt. That's Matt Jabe. Hey, hey, Fliz, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. Thank you, everybody, for inviting your followers if you're just joining. Hey, Deja, Deja, thank you for joining the scope. I don't know if you've ever joined Worship Conversations before, um, but I'm glad you're here. T. Tucker, the barber. Hey, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. This is Worship Conversations. It is 532. I was having some trouble. Hey, hey, Samson, I think I'm going to see you this weekend. Hey, Deej, I know this is your first time, so um, don't make me nervous. Don't make me nervous. Um, but thank you for joining. <clears throat> Debo, thank you for joining. Garrell, Pat, listen, you guys know what we do. You guys know what we do. Uh, Dem, thank you. Dem Zaza, thank you for joining. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Deej. Thank you. Um, Reverend Bams, thank you for joining. I, I'm just trying to get a little moment so I can greet everybody um, who I see coming in. If I haven't greeted you, please uh, just type your name. That would be greatly appreciated so I can greet you uh, the appropriate way. Hey, Ina T, tell Ina I'm going to see her in two days. It should be two days when I see her. I should be down there Thursday morning. So I should be able to see her before, I go to, before she goes to school and maybe after school too. Um, so, Ra, I know, I know that's you, Ra, FS2TS, author from the streets to the sanctuary. You guys need to follow him. He does a scope called The Mindset of a Mentee, okay? The Mindset of a Mentee, it is awesome. I saw Pastor McNulty on here, and he does uh, uh, morning meditations, and it, it is awesome. You need to follow him, Lighthouse FWC. Um, and, and next week he and his wife are going to start scoping together. It was an all, that's going to be awesome. I can't wait for that. That's 9 a.m. in the morning. Catherine, thank you for letting me, uh, borrow, uh, your husband <laughs> today. And so I appreciate you, you getting on. And, um, <clears throat> so we're going to get started. Listen, you guys know, um, but I'm going to pray. I'm going to sing, uh, a worship song and we're going to sing unto the Lord. And, um, listen, Another thing, just, just so you guys know, once you reach 500 hearts, they no longer count your hearts. So you have to go, you have to go out of the scope. If you want to give more hearts, you have to X out and you have to come back in for them to count your hearts. So once you get to 500, they max out at 500. Then you got to go out and come back in if you want to, uh, if you want to, uh, continue to have, uh, and if you, if you want to continue to give hearts. So listen, we're going to pray. I'm going to sing. Um, a worship song and we just want to worship. Yes. Um, yes. Amen. Amen. Um, hey, Raina. Hey, Raina. Raina, I'm with the high school with Raina. Everybody, everybody say hi to Raina. Thank you for, for coming on to the scope, Raina. Listen, one more time. If, if you haven't invited your followers yet, please do. Please invite your followers uh, here to Worship Conversations. Um, we're going deeper in our knowledge and our understanding of worship. Okay, uh, and our knowledge, and, and you just tap the screen to give hearts. You tap the screen to give hearts, Raina. Not like that. You got to tap the screen to give hearts. Hey, Evelyn, thank you for inviting your followers. Um, and listen, um, we're going deeper. And we're trying to go deeper in our knowledge and our understanding of worship. What God wants from us. What does He? What does He mean when He says worship in spirit and in truth? What the, if if the, if there's more to that? Guess what? We're trying to find out. We're trying to find out. And I am honored that God would uh, have me be able to be with you guys here for worship conversations. So. We're gonna we're gonna uh, sing a um, let's let's uh, we're gonna we're gonna I'm gonna pray and we're gonna sing and I'm gonna do a recap and we're gonna talk about the call of God today, Amen. 
Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you for uh, an opportunity to worship you. We thank you for an opportunity to sit here on a, on a Tuesday and use this medium called Periscope, where um, while, while the enemy may be seen as the prince of the airways, Lord God, um, the earth is yours and the fullness thereof, Lord God. And so we're going to use this medium to reach people for your glory, Lord God. It's all about your kingdom. Lord God, we just want to journey. We want to grow in you. We want to go deeper in you. We want to be in your face. We want to experience your supernatural presence, Lord God. And so, Lord God, be with us today as we as we dive a little bit into the, the calling of the call of God, the call of God, what you've called us to do. Uh, give us clarity, Lord God, for those who may not understand or know that know what's going on with their call may be unsure. Some the fire may have gone out. Uh, some may be in ministry. Uh, give us clarity today, Lord God. And uh, we thank you. We thank you for this opportunity. Um, in your name, I pray. Amen. So let's just worship. We're just going to have a time of worship right now. And this song is an awesome song. And it's it's uh, it's titled Your Great Name. And uh, it, it is an awesome, 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 wonderful song. Hallelujah. Lost are saved. Find their way at the sound. Of your great name, all condemned, feel no shame at the sound of your great name. Every fear has no place at the sound. Of your great name, the enemy, he has to leave at the sound of your great name, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. All the weak find their strength at the sound. Of your great name, hungry souls receive grace at the sound of your great name. The fatherless, they find their rest at the sound. Of your great name, the sick are healed, and the dead are raised at the sound of your great name, Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name. Oh, Jesus, worthy is the Lamb that was slain for us. Son of God and man, you are high and lifted up, and all the world will praise your great name, your great name, your great name.
Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Worthy is the lamb that was slain for us. Great is the name. Hey, Doe. Hey, guys, thank you for joining Worship Conversations again. If you guys are not singing this song in your church, um, you really need to get that song. That song ministers to the heart of God. We have got to stop singing songs that just make people feel good. Listen, they can watch Oprah if they want to feel good. They can watch Iyanla if they want to feel good. But if they want deliverance and if they want a breakthrough and, they, and if they want chains to be broken off their lives, they have got to minister. Hear songs that minister to the very heart of God. It has got to minister to the very heart of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 I'm, I'm kind of still in the moment. I'm kind of still in the moment. Oh God, I worship you, Lord. Oh God, hear our hearts, oh. Oh God, I love you, God, I love you. God, I love you, Lord. Oh, I need you, Jesus. Father, I need you, Lord. Your presence is so sweet, oh God. Father, your presence is so sweet, oh God. Oh God, I call on you. Your supernatural presence visit us on this scope today, oh God. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Oh, oh, oh. your name is great, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, your name is great, oh God. Father, your name is great, Lord. Oh, 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 God, I love you, Jesus. Oh, God, I love you, Lord. Your great name. Your great name. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Listen, thank you guys. Thank you guys for joining. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much for joining. Listen, um, whew. all right, so I'm going to try to do a recap <laughs> from last week. And um, last week we, we talked about things that can hinder uh, the supernatural visitation from God. I talked about how our churches today, um, amen, DeMarco, amen. Um, I talked about last week how our churches today are, are like the inner court of the tabernacle in the Old Testament, where the presence of the Lord resides in the inner court. The, the, the presence of God is in, I'm sorry, not resides, but is in the inner court. But the presence of God resides in the most holy place. And that was behind the veil. And because of Jesus, excuse me, because of Jesus, we no longer, we no longer have the veil. Uh, the veil has been torn and and um and because the veil has been torn um, um we we have access we have direct access to god and so when when that's why it's important that we minister to the heart of god um not just to the ear of god not just to the eyes of god but we must minister to the heart of god and when we touch his heart uh uh that's when he will supernaturally visit us and so i thank god for you guys being here today and we talked about things that could hinder the very supernatural presence of god um, last week, and we talked about, um, yes, if you can invite your followers, invite your followers, glory to God, hallelujah, uh, invite your followers, if you don't know how you just, uh, you swipe to the left, to the right, if you have an Apple device, and I'm not going to say this again, um, you guys can say it if you guys want, you know, you're never obligated to do so, but if you swipe to the right, um, and hit share broadcast, um, and then you can invite your followers that way, if you have an Apple device, if you have an Android device, swipe up, and uh, hit share broadcasting. You can do it that way. So we talked about some things that can hinder the very presence of God uh, visiting us. And um, a couple of things we had. We had mental distractions, unforgiveness, and unrepentant heart, uh, being unprepared. Um, we also talked about tradition and culture. Tradition and culture um, hindering the supernatural visitation of God. We cannot bow to culture. Okay, we have to be, we, we can be in culture, but not of culture. And we heard about that this Sunday from Dr. Leonard Sweet. And so we, uh, and, and I'm convinced that every time we come before the presence of God, once we come into the sanctuary where, where, where the presence of God is, he wants us to be focused with one body, one heart, one mind, one focus, one plan, one goal, and that's to touch his heart and worship. 
as it pertains to worship in church. Um, he wants us to worship with one heart and it, worship to one heart. And we always must worship for an audience of one. So, okay, so worship leaders, remember that you worship for an audience of one. And when you worship for an audience of one, uh, you'll be able to do like I did Sunday, sit and watch people just literally stone-faced and worship as I'm leading and, and still be able to get into the face of God and touch the heart of God. Um, we have to not be hand seekers, but heart seekers. I said that last week as well. And so today we're talking about um, we're talking about um, we're talking about the call of God. We're talking about the call of God. And I kind of talked with this with my sister, Pastor Danielle, um, uh, a little bit yesterday. And um, the first thing um, I have some scriptures. So if you're writing, if you're if you're writing, um, taking notes or anything, um, you 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 can just kind of write these things down. I'm not going to read everything. Um, I am going to read, Ted, if you can get me a, a, a Bible, I guess an NIV Bible, um, um, if you have one. Um, I'm, I'm going to read. We're talking about the call of God today. So listen, the first thing that I, that I was writing um, about when I talked about the call of God, I was thinking about, and this is actually the most difficult um, of the scopes, I, I would say, for myself, because it's, it's really practical. I, it, it's really it's just really practical. And so it'll probably be short and, and, I, and I'll be able to take questions from you guys. Um, at the end, um, as Christians, once we get saved and once we give our hearts to the Lord, we are all called by God to uh, to do the Great Commission, to go to therefore into all the world and make disciples. So as Christians, as people who are saved, we are all, all each and every one of us, we are all called. OK, so, so so we are all called to share our faith, OK, to share our faith with others so they, too, can align their hearts with the Lord Jesus Christ, and they too can be saved. And so as, as, as Christians, we all have that responsibility. That is our responsibility, and that, is a, and that is our call from God. And so the verse that I have for that is Matthew 28. We all know the Great Commission. Matthew, <clears throat> uh, Matthew 28, uh, verses 19 and 20. Those are the, um, I am going to read Ephesians, and that's what, that's what I'm going to read. Uh, and I'm going to read Ephesians chapter 4. And my next point is, is, uh, and I, and you, if you guys haven't been here before, I like to read. I like to read. I try not to drift, but I like to read. Um, I wrote that everyone is not, while everybody is called, while we as Christians, all of us are called to share our faith, the Great Commission. That is our responsibility. That's what we are all called to do as Christians. All of us are not called into ministry as a vocation, as a vocation. All of us are not called into ministry as a vocation. That means everybody's not called to be a pastor, Okay. Everybody's not called to be a worship leader. You know, ev that's not everybody's calling. That's not everybody's calling. All right. And so you may be set aside for service in your church. You may be set aside for service in your church, but everybody is not called by God to be a pastor. And quite frankly, I've, I've been around Bishop Bishop for, for, for 20 something years. Um, and it's quite frankly, it's not necessarily the most enviable uh uh, uh, title to hold. It, it is a lot of work. It is a lot of pain. It is a lot of, um, it, it is a, it is, it is a lot of prayer. Um, and if you have not been called to that thing, I, I don't, I don't suggest that you desire that. I, I don't suggest that you just jump into it. And so, um, you may be, like I said, you may be set aside for servicing your church, but that does not mean you are called to the preaching ministry or the worship ministry. I'm going to read Ephesians chapter four. Um, uh, I'm going to read verse 1 through 6, okay? It says, um, As a prisoner for the Lord, then I urge you to live a life worthy of the calling you have received. Be completely humble. So these are some things right here that, uh, that, that, require, that, that are required for us to live out our calling, okay? Be completely humble and gentle. Be patient, bearing with one another in love. Now this is now this right here. Now this right here is for the body of Christ. This is for the body. This is for this. So this is for everybody who's saved. We have to bear with one another in love. Make every effort to keep the unity of the spirit through the bond of peace. There is one body and one spirit, just as you were called to one hope when you were called. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and father of all who is over all and through all and is all. So that's us as the body of Christ. That is, that is what we need to do. We have to do that as the body of Christ. Now, I'm now I'm going to read, I'm going to read 
Uh, hey, Ron, thanks for joining, man. Um, I'm now going to read Ephesians 4.11, okay? Now, that, that's, that's the called ministry. Now, 4.11, 4.11 says, It was he who gave some to be apostles, some to be prophets, some to be evangelists, and some to be pastors and teachers. Now, that's vocational. That's vocational, okay? That's vocational. So that was Ephesians 4, uh, verse 1 through 6, uh, and then Ephesians 4, 11. Okay, so we got, you got, you're saved, so you've got a calling by God, all of us do, and now we're talking about vocation, the call of God, and we're going to talk a little bit about that today. Now, the first thing I wrote down was, was what, what's very important for us is, is the, the, the question that a lot of people are wondering, okay, that some people on here may be wondering right now is, how do you know that you're called? How do you know you're called? Okay, and, and this is what I wrote down. Okay, one, one thing is, is you need to examine your heart. You need to look at your heart. And, you, and what you need to check for your heart is you need to check the motives. You need to check your motives behind why you think you're called. Uh, uh, let's see. Um, um, have you watched the Preachers of L.A.? And that's why all of a sudden you're called. Because you see this wonderful TV show and you see all these this, these wonderful things that they have. Are you do you feel called because of the things that it looks like preachers are able to get as a result of being having a vocation of ministry? Okay, having a vocation of ministry is that why you think you're called? Um, what what are your motives? Do 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 you just like being followed? Um, do you just want to lead people? That cannot be your motive. That cannot be your motive. Is this a career move? Or is this a Christ move? That's what you need to ask yourself. Is this a career move or is this a Christ move? Because a career move, um, I, I wrote here, um, I, wrote, I wrote here, when you're pursuing a career, anybody in corporate America knows when you're pursuing a career, most people go into corporate America with this mindset. Okay, I'm going to take this position and in five years I'm going to be here. And then, you know, I want to make VP. In seven years, okay, and then after seven years, I think I want to make executive director, and then after executive director, I'm going to make managing director, and so you put, you, you have a time frame for how you want to advance your career, okay, and, and, and then additionally, if, if these goals are not met, okay, most times in corporate America, this is what happens, I know this, I know this for a fact, because I, because I work in corporate America at the moment, if, if those goals are not reached by that time, and let's say you work at J.P. Morgan, where I work, and Goldman Sachs comes and offers you a position of higher status and higher pay, then you'll leave. That's a career move, okay? That's a career move. That's not a Christ move, all right? And so careers, this is the one thing I wrote right here. This is, this is one thing I wrote. Careers advance people. Calling advances the kingdom of God. Careers advance people. OK. Hey, Dawn, how are you? How are you? Thanks for joining. Um, careers advance people. The call of God advances the kingdom of God. OK. Careers advance people, but the call of God advances the kingdom of God. So you're not looking for advancement. You, that's not your goal. That's not your mindset. That's not what you're seeking when, when it comes to the call of God. Hey, overseer, how are you, sir? Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. I appreciate it. Thank you for joining. Um, and so, and so we have to be, we have to be wary and we have to really seek God and say, Lord, is this a career move or is this a Christ move? And you really got to allow the Lord to speak to you. Okay. Uh, you need to let the Lord speak to you so you can be sure, because listen, make, trying to make a career out of the uh, think, thinking, trying to get preaching or worshiping, worship leader, a preacher, pastor, evangelist, prophet, because of the things that you want can literally get you taken out of here. Hey, hey, sir, I'm going to call you. To, uh, I need you to call me tomorrow. This is a brother from Pakistan. Let's all make sure we pray for him. There was a devastating earthquake that some of the reports that I saw, they said there are 350 people so far confirmed dead. And no, that that's that's all right. No, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I want everybody to pray for Pakistan tonight. He is a Christian. He is seeking Bibles. I have called the American Bible Society. So, hey, thank you, Texas. Thank you. Hey, Anissa. Um, um, so if, if anybody can help, if you guys can inbox me, I've called the American Bible Society already because I'm seeking Bibles in Urdu uh, to get to this brother in Pakistan. And so if anybody has any information, uh, you guys can do it. 
Uh, you guys can do it. Um, no grace for selfish ambition. Yes, and call to ministry. Absolutely. And so if we can, if you guys can inbox me and we can find out how we can get some Bibles in Urdu for this brother in Pakistan. Oh, as soon as as soon as I get them, sir, and I want you to give me a call tomorrow because I plan on speaking um, around around my time, six o'clock Eastern Standard Time. I plan on speaking to American Bible Society tomorrow. If anybody else can help me with that, please, please do. Please do. I really want to try to get them some Bibles in Pakistan. And we are honored and grateful that you, brother, are on um are on uh, the Periscope today. And so let's get back here. So I wrote here, I said, I believe there are a lot of people operating outside of their calling because they never heard from God. They never heard from God. And so I'm not saying that you, I'm not saying that you're not called. I'm just saying, I think you might be called and you might be in the wrong area. Okay. Now I want, and now I don't want my pastors to get all upset with me with this. Okay. And I don't want my worship leaders to get upset with me either. Um, but this is some touchy things. Okay. And so uh, there, there are some things, um, there are some things we, we need to understand. We must understand this right here. We must understand that we serve at the behest or the request of our leaders. That is why we, we, we serve at the request and at the behest of our leaders. Okay. But we are called by the voice and at the command of God. That's God calls us. Okay. God calls us. All right. God calls us. And what he does is, is, is when we, when we get into our local churches and our local body, then we are called to serve. Now, now hear me. There are pastors. There's a reason why God has pastors. So a pastor may say to you, you know, I believe you're called to preach. I believe you're called to preach. I know one thing that I've learned growing up, okay? One thing that I've learned growing up um, is, 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 is I, I always go back to the word. And, and I trust the pastors that I've heard, Bishop and, and Pastor Rob and Pastor Wilson. I trust them, Pastor, Pastor Glover, uh, a lot of bishops. I trust them, but they have always said, you, you go back and you go back and you read and you check it for yourself. And, and they always talked about having your own prayer life and your own walk with God. You know, God does not call the prepared. He prepares the call. Amen. Hey, hey Reverend, Reverend Megan, Leggett. Hey, thank you for joining, sir. And so we, we got to understand that once, if someone, good afternoon, if someone, if you have a pastor um, that, that calls you um, and, and, and may, you know, and says something like that, you still have to go and ask God for yourself what's going on. Lord, what are you calling me to? You need to, you need to talk to the Lord. Lord, what are you calling me to? God will speak to you. Okay. God will speak to you. If God spoke to you when he told you to get saved, he's not going to stop speaking to you after you got saved. Okay. So he will speak to you and he will tell you and you, but you got to keep asking. You got to keep asking. You got to keep asking. All right. And so, uh, I also wrote here, um, after I wrote, we are called by the voice of, by the voice and at the command of God. I, and the next thing that I think is very important is, is you got to have a prayer life. A, a prayer life is so important to the call of God. Okay. The, the, a prayer life is so important. Now, this is what I wrote right here. I was feeling it when I wrote this one today. I said, that is why it is important to have a prayer life because a prayer life will keep you from being seduced into a role or position by a charismatic prophet or preacher that told you how anointed you are for a position you were never supposed to be in. When you have a prayer life, when you have a prayer life, you can't be seduced by any word of God, by any prophet. You can't be seduced by any, the, the, the Lord would say, you can't be seduced by anything if you have a relationship with God because the Lord will speak to you. Now, hear me, hear me, hear me very clearly. I'm not saying, I'm, all preachers, part, part of, all preachers are not like that. There are some, but, but I'm speaking specifically to that person that doesn't have a prayer life. You can be swayed when you don't have a prayer life by any word from anybody. And so when it, when it comes to the call of God on your life, what you have got to do is you've got to get on your knees. You've got to get on your face. You've got to talk to the Lord and you've got to get in your word. You've got to read the word of God so you can get clarity on what it is the Lord wants you to do. What, what the Lord wants you to do. A prayer life will also help you. And I'm reading now. A prayer life will also help guide you to the pastor preacher the Lord has for you. That's going to affirm your calling and help you move towards the place God wants you to be. Now, most times, more times than not, the person who's going to affirm your calling is the pastor that you're under. 
Okay, if the pastor that you're under, all right, if if the pastor that you're under, if that that the, your pastor will affirm that thing, you can you can you can be called. Yes, so many have been seduced by the wrong word. So many, and, and we're gonna we're gonna touch on we gonna we gonna we gonna touch on that, and then we are gonna flip it, and, and it's it's gonna get a little dicey. It's gonna get a little dicey today. Um, but more than likely, your pastor will be able to affirm that thing in you. Your pastor will be able to affirm that thing in you. OK, and this this way you 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 will you will you will hear from God. You you will get an inward. You will hear an inward voice. OK, it will be an inward call from God. And then it will be an outward call of affirmation of that call. And so that's these these are some of the ways God will confirm the call in you. But it all starts with you. It starts with you. It starts with your prayer. It starts with you. It starts with you being in your word. It all starts with you. It all it will always start with you. Um uh, let me see. What did I write here? I said, uh, your pastor. OK, pastors, hear me. Please hear me. Um, be, be, because uh, because everybody bears some the, the person who's called and the person uh, and the person who's supposed to affirm bear responsibility, I believe, for why people don't always operate in their call. OK. And so pastor, mentor, uh, you, uh, your pastor or your mentor should then assist and guide you with directions on how to get whatever tools you need to properly fulfill your call. Okay, like I said, it's gonna be very practical today. Worship conversations. This is, this is very important to worship conversations because if you don't know your calling and if you don't have a relationship with God enough where you speak to God and he, and he, and he, and he, and he tells you that you're called and you don't have someone to help affirm that call, then, then I really don't get how you'll be able to fully worship God. You may be able to worship, but listen, worship isn't only about music. Worship is about serving. Okay. Worship is about serving. So, so you, how, how will you be able, be able to fully worship if, if you don't know who you are in Christ? And, and if you don't know what the Lord has called you to do or who he's called you to be. And so, and so your, 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 your pastor, your mentor, Aaron says, yes, Aaron's Aaron, Aaron is considered the first high priest and his sons were priests and God appointed them. God, God appointed them. And I was going to read the verse with the Levites, but it was a lot of reading. But as we all know, the Levites were appointed. It, it, they came from the Kohatite, the Kohatite clan, and they were the, the Levites came from the Kohatite clan of the of the of uh, in Israel, and they were appointed. They were they were assigned to the ark, and and they were assigned to the furniture of the ark. And so God appoints, God appoints, God appoints, and then and then He has man to affirm. Amen. And so, so, so let's remember that. Always remember that. Always remember that. You, some of us, you're waiting for, you're waiting for a human being to tell you what God has called you to do. And, and listen, God, God can speak to your pastor. Okay. God can speak to your pastor. But if you have a pastor of any worth, that pastor will tell you, this is what I believe you're called to do, but you need to go back to God. If you have a pastor worth anything, they, they will tell you that you need to go that you need to go and you need to seek God, okay? But this is what I believe. This is what I believe. I believe the Lord has called you. And if they've been journeying with you for years, they can say, listen, okay, well, you know, this is what I believe. Yeah. And listen, some another practical thing you need to do, you need to find out what your spiritual gift is. I'm going through that right now with Dr. David Schroeder, president of Pillar College. I'm going through that right now, finding out what your spiritual gift is. Not gifts, gift. Find out what your spiritual gift is gift is. And so these are some of the practical things that we need, that we need to find out what we're called to do. Um, let's see, I'm, I'm going to move on down. I'm going to move, I'm going to move on down. Um, uh, and, and, and Ted, if you can turn to Romans 11, I think that's very important because after this point, I'm going to go to Romans 11. Um, and you guys can turn to Romans 11. All right. Uh, and, and so, so now let me flip it. So many people, Bishop said so many people have been seduced by the wrong word. Amen. And that is the truth. And that's why you've got, you've got to know the Lord for yourself. Amen. You got to know, say, somebody type amen if you believe that. Amen. You got to know the Lord for yourself. You got to, you got to be, you got to have a relationship with the Lord and he will speak to you. All right. I can't get no amen, huh? Somebody type amen for me. There you go. There you go. <laughs> um, and so listen, but, but, but I really do. I don't really need the amen. I do thank you guys for it, but, but I really do, do really need to get you guys to understand that. And I'm not talking to those who are operating in their call. I'm talking about to those who are wondering, okay, who are wondering what they are called to do. Okay. And, and, and the flip side of it is this pastors, we, we, pastors, 
bear some responsibility as well. Okay, pastors bear some responsibility as well because we have some people operating outside there. Because there's some people pastoring who are pastoring churches that, and God never wanted them to be pastors, but because they had, but because they had, and they were up under insecure pastors, and they're so bruised that they've left. They've left those churches and they've begun to start their own thing. And so, pastors and 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 people who are called, we bear responsibility together together now me personally i don't me personally i i don't have that story i don't have that story i don't have that story and so and so but there are people out there wondering you know why can't i listen two days ago a gentleman came on and his name is matt foley he goes to ohio state and the reason why i mentioned that um that pastors bear some of the responsibility is because he said his question his first question was his first question was, do I have to be baptized to go to heaven? And I said, and Pastor McNulty was on, and I said, um, and I said, I don't believe so. You don't have to be baptized. I said, the famous saying is, uh, baptism is an outward expression of an inward experience. And then I said, Romans 10, 9 and 10, if you confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus is Lord and God raised him from the dead, then you're saved and that will get you to heaven. That gets you salvation. And so you, if you're not baptized, you're not. And so then he went on. Okay, then he went on. If you're not baptized, doesn't mean you're not going to go to heaven. But then he went on. And that was my belief in Pastor McNulty. Confirm that for me. Thank you, sir. Um, yeah, good Baptist polity. <laughs> yeah. Um, and so, and so, um, then he went on to say he played in a worship band. He, 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 he was under a worship pastor and he interned at a prominent worship church. And with, with a prominent name. They have different locations with a prominent name. And then he said, um, that he had gotten so hurt that he doesn't even play for Jesus anymore. And then he said he actually plays in a bar. That's where he plays now. But he grew up in church and he had the good command. And he said he, he feels he had the good command of the scripture, but he's now playing in a bar. And, 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 and so this is a situation where he was up under somebody and he was bruised and he was hurt. And so now he's no longer in the church. Remember, Ephesians 4, 1 through 6, we're talking about unifying, unifying the body, right? We're talking about unifying the body. And so that's why I say, pastors, we bear some responsibility for why some people are not operating inside their calling. If the Lord has called you to affirm, okay, if the Lord has called you to affirm uh, the call of God in people, Amen. If, if he's called you, then, then do that. Worship leader, you also, okay, worship leader, this one is for you, Pastor. You're going to like this one. Listen, just because God speaks to you doesn't mean God does not speak through anybody else. If God puts you up under somebody, okay, then more than likely that person has uh, your best interest in heart or they should have your best interest in heart. Amen. And, and so just because you hear something from your pastor, just because you hear something from your pastor that you did not want to hear or that you didn't like doesn't mean that you leave and go start your own thing. Okay? That's not what that means. It's a journey. This thing is a journey. Okay? It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. The call of God. Okay? Trust is major. Absolutely. And so there has to be trust both ways. And so we've got a bunch of people operating. And, and so what happens is we've had insecure pastors breed insecure pastors that have churches and they're breeding insecure people because what they're remembering is I'm called to this thing, but you wouldn't release me to do this thing because you got the spirit of Saul on you and you're jealous because of what I, because of what you think God has called me to do. And I can't grow in your church because you have the spirit of Saul on you, and so, but, but not understanding that they too are going to have that very same spirit of Saul. Because they have not dealt with it. They haven't dealt with it. And so the calling of God is so very important. It is important to the body of Christ. He gave to some teachers, apostles, evangelists, preachers, okay, prophets. It is very important if, 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 if Christ took the time, okay, if Christ took the time, 
right, to mention that he actually gave those things, if God took time to put it in scripture, then I think it's very important that we make sure everyone who is affirmed and, and, and everyone is pointed in the right direction. But but person who was under the pastor, okay, mentee, let, let me use Raheem's, let me use Raheem's thing, mentor, mentee. Raheem does a, a, a periscope, the mindset of a mentee, okay? Um, if, if you do that, so everybody's got to watch pride and jealousy and insecurity. That's right. It, it has bruised a proper operation of order. And so, and so dare I say, um, insecurity has breeded uh, bastard children. And a bastard child will only begin to breed a bastard child unless they're healed. Unless they're healed spiritually. And so we've got to deal with that. We've got to deal with that, okay? We have got to deal. We have got to deal with that. Amen. And listen, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, if it's so, so this is for people like Matt. Listen, let me, let me tell you something. People, if, if you are on this scope today and yes, sir, pastors pray against the spirit of Saul. If you're on this scope today and, and that fire has gone out, let me, let me explain something to you. If, listen, and if your life has been turned upside down and if you're not living right, or you're not living the way you think you should live, understand something. Some of the worst people you will find are in the Bible. Some of the worst people you'll find are in the Bible. David had a reckless life. Okay? Yes. As, absolutely. Absolutely. Yes. Sons and daughters. Got, that's what I was looking for. The spirit of Absalom. That's right. We've got to guard against that thing. We have got to guard against that thing. With the understanding, listen, someone is going to come up behind you. So you've got to, you, mentee, you've got to deal with that spirit of Absalom. So the person who's coming up under you won't have that spirit of Absalom. But that father of yours or that mother of yours have got to deal with that spirit of Saul. So you don't become Saul. So you don't become Saul. Okay. And so it's, it, it, it's all, it all intertwines. And so it's very important that, that we deal with that thing. But the per, to the person who, uh, to, who, who that fire has gone out, listen, understand something. Th listen, that fire is out, but, but God can light that thing. Let me encourage you today. God can light that thing. I don't care how far you've fallen. I don't care how far out there you are. Listen, the prodigal, God is waiting with open arms. God's arms are so wide open and all he's waiting for you to do, he's waiting for you. He's waiting for you to, to make an about face and come back to him. And listen, he's got the finest robe for you and he's going and he's, and he's going to cook the greatest meal for you and you're going to get the best of everything because God is not a man that he should lie in his word or not return back to him void. If he called you then, he's calling you now. He's calling you now. If he called you then, he's calling you now. Let me encourage you. He's calling you now. And I'm going to, I'm going to go, I'm going to go to this next point. Romans 11, Romans 11 and 29. Let me see that Ted right there. Thank you very much. Uh, Romans, I didn't go home, so I didn't grab my Bible today. I came straight here because I'm doing some traveling tomorrow. Thank God. Uh, Romans 11, 29, it says, for God's gifts and his call are irrevocable. God's gift. Now, I'm going to come out my notes real quick because I think it's very important that I need to read this. I love the way the Message Bible puts it. I, I love the way the Message Bible puts it. Romans 11, 29. Where is it? I'm getting to I'm getting there. Hold on. Bear with me, folks. Okay, here we go. The Romans Bible, the, 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 uh, the Message Bible says, okay, the Message Bible says God's gifts and God's call are under full warranty. Full warranty, never canceled, never rescinded, never canceled, never rescinded. So I don't care what bar you play in. God can pull you out of that bar and he wants you to come out of that bar. He wants you to come out of that bar because he's anointed your hands to play for his heart. He's, he's anointed your voice to sing to his heart. Not just for his ears. He just doesn't want to see you, but he wants your heart. And he wants to hear your voice because your heart, when you sing, it blesses his heart. When you play, it blesses his heart. When you preach, it blesses his heart. When you serve food uh, in, in a soup kitchen, it blesses his heart. When you walk the streets and hand out tracts, it blesses his heart. When you give money, when you, when you feed someone, when you see someone homeless and you give them your last dollar, it blesses his heart. Because that's what he's called you to be. You're walking and you're calling. And he wants all of us to walk in our calling. The calling that he has designed for us. Amen. Listen, th 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 and I'm, we're about to go to questions. 
I, I read that 1129 and I'm going to read exactly what I wrote. I read that verse to remind you that you have no out. This is for all of us now. This is for everybody. All right. This is for everybody. You have no out. You've been called. It can't be rescinded. God is not rescinding it. OK, it's on the full warranty. He's not canceling it. So guess what? You've got no out. You have no out. You have got to hold on to God. And I'm reading now. You've got to hold on to God and walk out your calling. I'm just in care. This is just an encouragement for you guys. Now, you've got to you've got to hold on to God and walk out your calling. You've got to know that he's with you every step of the way on those days where you don't feel like it. He's carrying you. You've been called to do great things for an even greater God. So put on the full armor of God, square your shoulders and move forward. Put on the full armor of God, square your shoulders and move forward. Whatever, whatever moving forward, you may have to cut out some friends out of your life. You got to move forward. You may have to change the TV shows you watch. You've got to move forward. Worship leader, you may have to change the music you're listening to. But guess what? You've got to move forward. You've got to move forward because understand something. Understand, understand. Be, 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 let me be very clear. What you don't want is to live a life. You don't. What, what you don't want is the blood of people on your hands who were supposed to hear your voice. God will hold you accountable. You do not want the blood of people. There are people out there that was that 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 God is waiting for you to turn your life around. That God is waiting for you to answer his call and he's waiting for you to answer so you can speak to specific people. And if those specific people don't hear you, it, 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 my question is, are you willing to take the risk that they never hear about Jesus because you never answered your call? Are you willing to take that risk? Are you willing to sit there and say, you know what? Uh, they'll hear it from somebody else. They'll hear it from somebody else. My question to you is, are you willing to take the risk that they will? Because the simple fact of the matter is, if God called them to hear you, then maybe he wants them to hear you. Maybe it's your story that he wants them to hear. Maybe it's your testimony. Maybe it's your life he wants them to see. Maybe it's the song that you're singing he wants them to hear. And even if they've heard it before, maybe he wants to hear, he wants them to hear you. And if he wants them to hear you, then guess what? Are you willing to take the risk and have the blood on your hands if you choose not to answer your call? And God said to Moses, pitch your tent away from the camp in Exodus, right? You can't go. Everybody can't go with you. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you have got to understand something. You have got to understand something. Listen, I just want to encourage you guys now. I, I don't have any more notes. I got some notes on the paper, but I'm going to I'm going to just take a few questions now. I got some 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 other stuff. I got some other stuff that I could say, but I'm, I'm going to hold that. But listen, you've got to do it. You've got to do you've got to get a prayer life. Get a prayer life. Get a prayer life, man. Get a prayer life. Get a prayer life. Talk to God. Talk to God. Lord, Lord, what Lord, I, I pray even just really, really quickly for everyone on this scope who watches the replay. Lord God, who's watching this right now, Lord God, if they don't understand, if they don't know who they've been called to be and you, what you've called them to do. Lord God, I pray that you begin to answer the prayer as they, as they specifically ask for you to reveal the call that you have for them. And I pray, Lord God, that you will link them with a secure pastor, Lord God, uh, a secure pastor, and I pray against the spirit of Saul for that pastor and the spirit of Absalom for the person who's seeking what it is that you've called them to do. I pray against anything that would come against them finding out their call. And I pray that you would link them, Lord God, with credible pastors, Lord God, that would help them and that would affirm the call that you've given to them. Lord God, I pray that in Jesus' name. Amen. So if if it's somebody that that um that 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 needs to, to that doesn't know, listen, ask God. Ask God. Listen, we've got a bunch of pastors on that are good pastors. We've got pastor. We've got Bishop. He's on the he's on the he's on the scope right here. We've got Pastor McNulty. We've got Pastor McNulty. Uh, he's on the line. We've got Pastor Danielle. She's on the line. We got Overseer Overseer Broughton. Uh, he's on the line. We've got uh, uh, Reverend Leggett. He he's on the line. There's some there's some credible folk on here. And and let me and let me and let me and let me explain to you how I know they're credible because because if 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 you if you, if for, for Bishop Hilliard, I'm going to talk about our personal relationship really quickly. I, Bishop Hilliard can call me for prayer. He can call me for prayer. He can call me for prayer. Pastor McNulty, he comes here and he says he's blessed. You're not dealing with somebody who's not.
who's saying you're under me and so you can't be used to speak to me. This is what I'm talking. We're talking about securement of God, securement of God. I, I, Danny and I have been friends for over 20 years, covenant relationship. She is strong and she is strong in her position. My brother Raheem, my brother Raheem, we, 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 he knows when, when he knows when I'm submitted to him and what he has to say. And then the flip side, you know, uh, uh, I know when I'm submitted to him. I don't have papers. I ain't licensed. I'm not ordained. But I'm able to speak into people's lives um, because uh, they don't carry the spirit of Saul. And so you need to link up with somebody. You cannot have the spirit of Absalom. Mentee, you cannot have the spirit of Absalom. You cannot. You cannot. You got to pray against that thing. And so we already talked about that and we talked about the spirit of Saul. And so, listen, I want to encourage you guys. I want to encourage you guys. Listen, get that thing. Get on your knees. Get on your face. Turn down your plate. Whatever you've got to do. If you don't know what God, who God has called you to be, God is God will answer you, but you've got to ask him. You've got to ask him. And so, listen, that's it. That's it. That's it. Okay. Okay, that's it. That's all. Listen, we got questions. If you have any questions, you feel free to ask. I said it was going to be very practical. I just wanted to kind of speak about the call of God and um, and uh, and ju and just uh, and just affirm you guys. I wanted to affirm you guys. Reverend Reverend Leggett, bless you. I don't know if I'm following you, but I'm about to, sir. I'm following you now. Uh, Johnny Marks Leggett, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. God, what? A yes, yes. See, Demarco, you've got to ask God. You've got to ask God. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Raina. Thank you. She said, I've grown since high school. Thank y'all. Because she got some stories. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so thank God. But amen. Amen. And so have you. Not sure where, my, where your calling is. Well, DeMarco, I, I encourage you to pray, man. I encourage you. Amen. I received that. I, I received that. I received that. I'm going to, um, I'm not following. Mimi, thank you very much. I received that. I received that. Um, thank you very much. You, DeMarco, you got to pray, man. Uh, you got to pray. You've got to pray. Um, yes, and I and, and I am a product of Bishop Donald Hillier Jr. Okay, I've sat under great teaching. You, you one thing you cannot do at the cathedral. You can't come in with no little crazy. Um, you can't come in with a little crazy. You know, you know, people come and they preach those words. Some people on TV they come preach those words and they got and they start throwing all those cliches out. You know, the Bible cliches, spiritual cliches. They start throwing those things out. You can't come to the cathedral with that stuff. You can't come. You can, you can't come to cathedral with that stuff because we recognize real word, real word. Myself, Danny, we recognize real word. We got Pastor Wilson, who I'll be with this weekend. Um, we got real word, and we get a chance to hear bishops like 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 Bishop Seawright and Bishop Johnson and Bishop Douglas, and and we and we get you know we we get we get real word. We get real word. Uh, amen. We get real word. And so and so um, I, I'm a product of of this ministry of this ministry. Glad to hear. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Nancy. Glad. Thank you. Thank you for joining. Thank you. Oh, I receive it. I receive it. I, I receive it. I receive it. So listen, guys, listen, guys, I, you know, if anybody has any questions, DeMarco, I want to encourage you. Okay. I want, I want to encourage you, DeMarco, to, to, to pray and listen, be specific in your prayers. You, you take time. If that means you got to say, listen, I'm going to pray three times a day. And, and one of those times, I'm praying specifically to find out what the call of God. Discerning calls requires practical and spiritual measures. Amen. Yes. One, pray. Two, fast. Three, get in the word. A a absolutely. What, what question? What question do you have? You have a question for me, John? You have a question for me? You have a question for me, sir? So I've only had one question, John. So that, that's the one I answered uh, for DeMarco. Um, um, say, hey, listen, John, listen. You, you don't have to agree. Um, and, and listen, I'm not I'm not going to block you, sir. Um, you, you don't have you don't have to agree, um, because if I block you and if and if people and if Christians just keep blocking people who don't agree, guess what? How are these people going to hear? How are these people going to hear? But I do ask, John, that um, what, what are you trying to ask? That's what I'm asking. I'm sorry. I apologize. Um, I apologize, sir. So um, 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 uh, let, but it, well, answer, ask your question now. Ask your question. And I'm waiting and I'm going to wait for you to ask your question. And um, and I'm gonna um, and I'm gonna answer it. Examine yourself. What comes natural? What things come natural? And you find yourself doing every in every area of your life. All right, John. That, yes, Amen. That's my sister right there, Pastor Danielle. Um, and be patient, Amen. John, I'm waiting for your question because I want to be because I want to answer you, sir. I want to answer you. So please, I I I pray that you ask the question because um um 
from North Carolina. I'll be in North Carolina this weekend in Raleigh uh, on Saturday and Cary on Sunday. Uh, I'm doing worship conversations, everybody, at True Gospel Pentecostal Church, um, uh, Pentecostal Church of Christ. I'm doing um, worship conversations there at 10 a.m. on Saturday, uh, this coming Saturday morning. John, are you there? Are you there, John? Please, uh, please ask your question. Please, I uh, really want you to ask your question. Hey, from Little Rock, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Th yes, 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 yes. I received that. I received that. I received that. I received that. Thank you. Listen, I, re I received that word. I received that word. Amen. Amen. John, if you're still there, please ask your question. If anybody else has a question, um, if, if anybody else uh, has a question, um, uh, please ask. Please ask. That's why I'm here um, at this at this moment. Uh, Teddy's Teddy left. You know, Teddy trying to go home. I don't blame him. Um, and, and, and so, uh, um, but we're, we're going to close soon. We're going to close soon. Yes. John, I apologize. John, let me say this. I apologize if I didn't, um, answer your question. I, I really do. Um, 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 if you are one that does not believe, um, in the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, I will pray that you believe. And, and listen, I said this before people of God, listen, we, we cannot continue to just block people when they come on saying crazy stuff, when they come on, they call it trolling. We can't just continue to block people because if, if, if everybody who's saved is blocking people who aren't saved, then they will never hear, okay? They will never hear. And Periscope is a wonderful medium. Um, uh, but, but for anybody who doesn't agree, John, if you're still on, um, um, I, will, I will talk with you and I will answer your questions. Um, uh, one thing, the Bible is not to be debated, but I will answer questions and I will hear your thoughts. I will hear your thoughts. Um, and, um, because I believe uh, interaction and conversation is important. Yes, exactly. We must build bridges and not barriers. So I want to encourage all of you guys, unless they're being outwardly just flat out disrespectful, then I can understand you blocking them for that moment. But even even then, maybe you should unblock them after you're done. If they're being disruptive to what to what the Lord is calling you to do, uh, you can block them for that moment and then unblock them because I believe you would do well on blab. I've never heard of blab, but I, I'll look it up. Your ministry is going to go very far. God bless you, and you are right about all your sin. Amen. Thank you. I've been praying more so. Start at yes. Ask God specifically, DeMarco, for your call. It was awesome seeing you, man, on Sunday. It was awesome seeing you, and I was blessed by your words. Um, and you've always shared great, kind words with me, and I appreciate it, man. Um, but I really, but I really, really want you, um, I, I don't want you to be scattered. I don't want you to be scared. And you know I love you. And, and, and so I'm not trying to put you out there and embarrass you or anything. But I don't want you to be scattered. I want you to be firm because you have a wonderful, awesome story to tell. And, and there are going to be young people who can be delivered and older people who will be delivered from what you're saying, from, what you're, from, from your story. You know, you've, you've got an awesome story. You've got a testimony, man. But it's time to get rooted. It's time to dig your heels in. It's, t it's, time, it's time to square your shoulders. It's time, it's, time to get, it's time to square your shoulders. It's time to get on your knees. And it's time to pray and ask God exactly what it is he wants from you. All right? All right. Listen, guys, I thank you guys for coming. We don't have many questions. Um, I thank you guys. I'm, I'm going to send up a, 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 just a couple of quick announcements. I fly out to North Carolina tomorrow. I fly out to North Carolina to, to, to uh, Raleigh tomorrow at 2.30. How do I get in the presence of God through prayer? I think um, what, what God is, it, it's kind of like hide and seek, right? It, it's kind of like, uh, <laughs> um, it's, it's kind of like hide and seek. God wants us to have a consistent relationship with him. And so if you continue to talk to God and, and, and pray, and, and listen, part of, part of the problem when we pray is we don't, we, we, we don't stop long enough to listen. And so it's when the Lord begins to speak to you is when you'll begin to get in his presence. A lot of people get that mixed up. We pray, we pray, we pray, and then we pray and we pray and we pray and we pray. And then we say in Jesus' name, amen. And then we get up and we start doing whatever it is we were going to do. But you never allow God a moment to speak to you. And so sometimes you got to pray and sometimes you got to sit. Sometimes you got to sit. I did a class when I was at Pillar College. It was Somerset Christian College then. Uh, thank you. Thank you, sir. Um, um, I was at, and, and we did a class and it was called hearing from God. Right. It, and it was this exercise we did. We called, uh, it, it, I'm sorry. The exercise we called was called hearing from God. It, it was called the listening lab. That's what the exercise was called a listening lab. And so the professor, uh, the professor would say, the professor said this, I want everybody to take 50 minutes. I want you to go outside, go, go, you can go to your car. You can go wherever on campus. Don't pray. Don't read the Bible. 
don't sing, he was saying that to me, don't sing, just be quiet and just listen. And you'll be amazed, okay? And then, yes, the Lord takes his time, but but it's a process. It's a process. It, remember, I said it's a marathon, not a sprint. And so it's, it's um, and, and he said, be quiet. And people will come back and they'd be crying and they'd be crying because God, did, God didn't say anything. And then I remember one time one girl was boohooing. God didn't say anything for four weeks. And then she said, came back the next week and said, God literally, literally spoke for 45 straight minutes to her. After doing the exercise for four months, God spoke literally to her for 45 minutes. He spoke literally for 45 minutes to her. And so that was amazing. That was a blessing to her. And so we, we got to practice listening, just like we practice talking to God, just like we make a, we make, um, yes, absolutely. God's timing is everything. Absolutely. And so it's important that, um, that, that we listen as much as we pray. We got to listen. Okay, so that I hope that helps you. I hope that helps you. Um, a couple of announcements. Again, I said I fly out tomorrow. I have a two thirty flight. I fly to uh, Raleigh. Okay, hey, hey. Um, we, there's a there's a lot of us you can talk to, man. Yeah, absolutely. Study to be quiet. Study to be quiet. Absolutely. Absolutely. So I fly to Raleigh tomorrow, and I I'm doing a rehearsal at um at Pastor Wilson's church with his worship team because I'll be there Sunday. Then Wednesday night I, I I drive to Atlanta. I'm driving to Atlanta uh, with my godfather. We're driving to Atlanta. And listen, this is what I really need you guys to be praying about. I have the opportunity to minister on the TV show Atlanta Live. Amen. Uh thank you, men of God. I have a better understanding. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm I'm glad. I'm Tony, thank you. I'm 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 very glad that um that I that I could um uh, that I could that I could help you with that. Thank you, and and, and all and all glory goes to God. Um, but I have a, an opportunity to minister on Atlanta Live. It's a live TV show down in Atlanta, and um, and and I want you guys to pray. I ju I just want you guys to pray because listen, I just want I just want God's glory to be revealed in everything that I do with everything that I pray for. I I, I even started saying, listen, I don't want people healed so their family can feel good. I want people healed. The the family feeling good about healing is a byproduct of God's glory being revealed. Everything. I want God's glory to be revealed in everything that we do. In everything that we do, our goal should be so the glory of God is revealed here on earth as it is in heaven. And so, um, so, and then I come back, I drive back on Friday. I'm going to go to uh, my brother, Jared, uh, my God brother's game. His football game is North Carolina and they have a rivalry game. So I'm going to that uh, on Friday night, get a chance to kind of relax, get a chance to see my niece, Ina T and my nephews, uh, Gassi and, and, and Nico and, and my sister Chrissy and my brother Jeff. Um, um, I get a chance to see them. Um, Simon Birch. <laughs> um, and so I get a chance to see them and kind of hang out. And I get to go to Waffle House. If you follow me on Instagram at Seth Nick's Music, you know I love Waffle House. And I always post pictures of Waffle House. Thank you, Jesus. Waffle House is greasy. But since I don't have it a lot, I'm going to have it again when I get down there on Friday. Um, on Thursday. Uh, and then I come back and Saturday morning, I do worship conversations. I do worship, <laughs> I do worship conversations at True Gospel Pentecostal Church of Christ. Uh, my friend Will Brown is pastoring. It's a church uh, that he took over after, after his parents passed away. So I'm doing worship conversations. there. And then on Sunday, I get to be with my pastor, my youth pastor and his wife and their family and their church. Uh, it's my, my, my other home, my North Carolina home in Cary, North Carolina at Christ Family Church. And so thank you, Danny. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I appreciate it. I appreciate it coming from you. Um, and so uh, I have a full weekend and I'm kind of getting trying to get my travel legs. But pray um, specifically as I'm, as I'm talking about praying about specifics, um, pray that the Lord would really and everything pray, pray that God will, will get glory out of my life that God would get glory out of my, thank you, thank you, Raheem, and, and, and listen, that's my brother, follow him, follow Pastor Danielle, my sister, follow FS2TS, that's my brother, Raheem, uh, who wrote a book, um, and, and, and I am so in, in, indebted to, they, 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 they prayed for me, I have not had the easiest life, I've made a bunch of, bunch of horrible mistakes, so for anybody who's still watching, if you are one who think your mistakes are too great, listen to me, <laughs> I've lived it. I've, I've lived a life full of mistakes as a leader, and, 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 and I'm able to speak today on Periscope, not because I'm good, not because I'm great, not because I'm grand, but because the, the grace, I am a walking example. I am a poster child for grace and a poster child for mercy. 
And so I thank God. I thank God. Um, amen. Amen. I receive it. I receive it. So guys, pray for this specific thing in Atlanta. Um, um, you got to know I'm coming out with it. I'm coming out with a, uh, with a CD next year, um, titled just worship. And, and I'm praying that somebody, uh, uh, my, my Godfather Daryl said, I hear 10,000. And, and I said, I hear 20,000 that, that someone would come pray specifically that, and, and I've been seeing, and I've been feeling, and the Lord didn't say this to me, but I've been, I've been feeling like someone is going to reach out to me and they're going to say, I want to pay for the rest of your project to get done. And so I'm believing that. No, the Lord didn't say that to me. That is a desire. It is a desire. Okay. But I'm going to pray it because I expect that, that because I'm asking in Jesus name. And the only reason why I'm asking and the only reason why I do what I do is so that God's glory is revealed. Amen. Amen. So, um, pray for my, for, pray for my travel, uh, uh, that everything would go well, that ministry would go well and that God's glory is revealed. Um, um, amen. 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 I need to make sure I'm following you, and I am, me, me, thank you very much, um, in Jesus' name, thank you, thank you, thank you, <laughs> I got to try to get you one, Raina, I got to try to get you one, I got to try to get you one, and so I thank you guys for coming, listen, next week, Periscope, Worship Conversations, we're having Worship Conversations, um, listen, if, you, if somebody's watching the replay, you can, you can tap the screen and give hearts, and, and, and listen, I know, uh, you know, you know, if you guys are, I, I thank God. I thank God for hearts. I thank God when you're not giving hearts, because I feel like when you're not giving hearts, that you're writing down notes and that and that you're that you're really taking all of this in. So I thank God for you guys. I thank God for the opportunity to share with you, um, um, Pastor McNulty. If you're still on, if you can email me your number, I'd like to give you a call, sir. Um, Seth Nix Music at Gmail dot com, or you can put yours up here, and I and I'll try to email. I'll try to email you if you're still on. Um, uh, but I would like to talk with you. Um, uh, amen. Thank you. Thank you for coming by. I really appreciate you guys. Listen, we'll be back next week at 530 for Worship Conversations. Um, um, and I, I, I'm really honored that you guys would come and you would sit and you would listen and you would um, um, really take the time to sit here and um, listen to Worship Conversations with me. Um, so pray for me, guys. Listen, I'm, I'm praying for you guys. DeMarco, I'm praying for you. Uh, Mimi, I thank you for the word. I receive it in Jesus' name. Danny, oh Lord, you know what? I'm calling you. I'm calling you. Wait a minute. I'm calling you. I am calling you as soon as when I. Oh wait a minute. Did you email me? America's got anointing. I thought that was. I thought. I don't think you emailed me. Email me your number, sir. Um, um, Seth Nix Music at Gmail dot com. America's, America's got anointing. I thought I got an email from Pastor, uh, from from the pastor from the Bronx. That's who I thought I got an email from. Who I got a call. Who I'm calling right now. Uh. Okay, I can't. That, that's gonna. That's gonna. Um, that's going to. That's gonna disappear. Uh, that's gonna disappear. P pray, pray at America's Got Anointing dot com. Um, if you can email that to me at Seth Nix Music, uh, Seth Nix Music at gmail dot com. That'd be greatly, greatly appreciated. If you can, please, sir. Please, sir. Um, so again, thank you guys. Thank you guys um, for thank you guys for coming, and I look forward to seeing you guys. And I look forward. I don't know what we're talking about next week. The Lord will reveal that to me on Thursday, probably. I kind of take a, I kind of uh, uh, detox, you know, a little bit, and I kind of decompress. Um, oh, thank you, thank you very much. Um, um, and I just got an email from the woman from um, from Atlanta Live. And so, um, listen, uh, I'll see you guys next week. I'm praying for you. Listen, I love you guys. I'm ending the call with this the way I always end the call. Yes, Seth Nix Music at Gmail .com. Thank you very much. Thank you very very much. Um, listen, I end, I end all my scopes this way, okay? Um, I exist to be used. Remember this, okay? I, we exist. I'll say it today. We, we exist to be used by God so God's glory is revealed here on earth as it is in heaven. Love you guys. See you next week. Thank you for coming.